with his drone. He's become an internet sensation, his videos racking up tens of millions of views. So from here, you have no idea there was a great white shark out there because it's almost impossible to see it from the beach. And that's why drones are so important. So drones, when you're viewing a shark, you're not in the water with a shark. You're not uh, swimming with a shark. You don't have a camera in the water that they can sense. You're basically viewing the sharks through a magnifying glass that they don't know is watching them. Here we go. Go. Finding a shark, though, isn't always easy. So I know where to fly. Okay, let's see if I can find this damn thing. They don't like the brown water. See, there's the shark right there. Oh, I see it. Yeah. So as I go down to it, you'll be able to see, and I'm rolling and recording this. It's about a nine foot shark. I'm guessing that's about nine feet, yeah. From the sky, Carlos captures moments that would be hard to see with a naked eye. <laughs> look, look, he's doing, he's doing something. Oh, he's doing, he's something. doing something, right? Yeah. Did you see him turn fast? Mm. He turned right back toward that kelp. Oh, this is exciting. He's turning back toward it. Filming with Carlos is a pleasure, but I'm not the only one who wants to go out with him. Scientists who are also interested in Carlos's footage have taken an interest, including one local marine biologist who was with him when he filmed something he'd never seen before. In the days both prior and the day of, we had seen very large sharks that had considerable girth on them. So that it's a very wide looking shark. So I'm like, well, either that shark's eating very well or it might be carrying some pups inside of it. Female just was acting erratically. She dove, disappeared, and guess what came up from underneath? This little bitty white, almost albino looking white shark. I think the word albino was just shouting out of her mouth, like albino, albino, albino. And then we start to zoom in and I'm like, I I'd never seen anything like the this before. It was just white looking shark. So it's called a white shark, you know, that's the species, it's a white shark. But this shark was actually completely white in color. I was looking at the video, I'm like, the fins, they're differently shaped, they're more rounded. I'm like, that's not, that's not an older white shark, that's a very young white shark. This could be a newborn. I'm like, oh my, oh my goodness, this could be a newborn. One of the greatest mysteries in great white shark science is reproduction. The holy grail of white shark research is the birth of a great white shark. And I believe that that is probably the closest we've ever been to the actual birth of a great white shark. Phil believes the size and shape of the fins all point to a very young shark. He thinks the white layer could be residue from birth. If this is indeed a newborn white shark that still has this what we call embryonic layer of mucus-like substance still on its body. Never been seen before. Thing. So this would be the first case that we've seen such a thing. Who knows how old the shark actually is? Is it minutes old, hours old, days old, weeks old? But nowhere else in the literature has such a finding ever been uh, observed. But both men also say that this may be a skin condition. Other experts accept this could be a historic discovery, but that they need more evidence. Everything that we know about reproduction in white sharks comes from about 10 females that were killed that were pregnant at various stages of pregnancy. That's it. So we really don't know much, if anything, about white shark reproduction. So I, I've seen the footage of the shark and, and it's really interesting and it's, and it's beautifully shot, of course, and under great conditions. The problem that I have as a scientist is what, it's what we call a sample size of one. Sure, this, this could be a newborn shark, or it could be a shark with a skin disease, or it could be a number of other things we, we haven't even thought of. But unfortunately, it's a sample size of one. And, and, and a lot of people ask, well, what would it take to convince you that, that this is a pumping area? And, and I would say I would need to see babies coming out of a female. But what everyone can agree on is that drones are playing a huge role in learning more about sharks, including how often they interact with humans. Are there any moments that you filmed where you felt nervous for the people in the water? I, I say yes. <laughs> I'd be lying if I said I did not feel nervous sometimes. It's not that 
we didn't know that sharks were near people before. We've known that for a long time. We just didn't know how much. The next question that needs to be answered is, what does that mean? It's likely that drones will give us a tool to begin to answer them. Thank <laughs> you.